Okay, welcome to Optics for Engineers. This is Professor Heikenfeld, and in this presentation, we're going to go over the course information and background. You know, so let me get start you off about what this course is about, and you can see that in the photos here. So basically, this course is about taking you with a starting knowledge of just some basic stuff you would have seen maybe in physics your freshman year or in high school, such as laws of refraction and things like that, and building your confidence level up to the point where you can make even more advanced optical systems like you see here. And so, you know, imagine it this way. Let's say that you're working on a job um, a couple years from now, and, and you're working for a company that no, doesn't do any kind of optical systems work. I consider it success in this course if after you've taken this course and a couple years down the line you have to start a project, someone has to start a project at the, at the company to build up some sort of optical system and at the meeting you raise your hand and you say, you know what, I've done this before, I had enough confidence, I knew how to build optical systems and I can take the lead on this project. Um, again, we're going to teach you some of the, some of the basics from the, the theory and the physics but we're also going to teach you the practical aspects in the lab, which you're never going to learn in a textbook. So it's a really powerful course, and I think that you'll enjoy it. So just some general information. Um, here's my contact information. You can uh, reach me by email as best. Uh, my office hours are typically Monday, Wednesday through Friday in the morning, but pretty much any time I'm free. I'm here most of the day, every day. Uh, but schedule an appointment. And you can also uh, video Skype me as well if you have questions. That tends to work best. In terms of grading, um, look at the very end for how we grade this lab. I want to note that lab reports are due before the start of the quiz and lecture for each week. And after that, it's 10% per day and none after the final. The makeup policy, well, there's no makeup tests and assignments without proof of uh, tragedy, illness, or photos of supernatural events. All you got to do is let me know. So if, if, you, if your car breaks down or you've got, you know, you're, gonna, you're ill and you need a doctor's note, just let me know now in, in advance. It, it gets a little fishy when I hear about it, you know, two days later. So just let me know in advance and we can work with you. For this lab, there is a $50 fee. Now, there's no textbook, so this is less expensive than some of your other courses. And this fee is partly because, you know, we, each kit you're using has about, actually right now, about $30,000 in parts. And so this helps us maintain the lab. You can give the check to Janie Runk in 812 Roads. You can make it payable to University of Cincinnati. And please do so within a week's time. Okay? If you break something expensive out of complete careless, carelessness, we'll need to talk. Um, okay? But this fee is also used to cover the little accidents that will happen. So I expect small things to basically become damaged or broken. Do the best you can to not have that happen. But this fee helps us maintain, maintain the lab. Now, this is a 6,000 level course. It's half lecture and half lab. I'll be available to answer questions regarding the lecture, but you're expected to work independently in the lab, so I'm not going to be in the lab while you guys are doing this. I have spent a ton of time rewriting the lab procedures compared to what they used to be years ago um, as they were provided by this company, Newport, which provides a lot of the equipment. So the procedures are really good. And so if you follow those procedures, which are documented improvement, proven, you're going to be in great shape. Again, I emphasize follow the procedures closely and exactly. If you don't, it will cost you a lot of time. When I come into the lab to help a group because they're having trouble, typically what happens is they spend two or three hours trying to line some kind of optical component, and they wasted two or three hours simply because they did not follow the procedures exactly as I put them out. So I can't emphasize this enough. In terms of workload for this course, it'll vary. Some weeks you'll be like, wow, this is, this is a piece of cake for a three credit hour course. Some weeks you'll be like, whoa, this is, this is tough. And this is, thank, thank goodness that the whole course isn't like this. But in the end, it will average out such that it's a reasonable load for a three credit hour course. Furthermore, remember, the end of this project, uh, the end of the course, you have a design project and there's no final exam. So you have a soft landing. So if you have to work hard up front, remember towards the end it's going to get a little bit easier time-wise for you. The book is a reference textbook, meaning you don't have to buy it, but if you do want to buy it, um, this is the best one I, I found. I surveyed more than 12 books preparing for this course. This is the best one I found. An excellent sefer second reference book is, is Hecht Optics, but again, Fundamentals of Photonics. If you're an engineer, this is the best book I've found for engineers, and it's great because it covers 
optical systems and engineering from all different perspectives of basic theory all the way through more applied systems as well. In terms of lab reports, each person turns in their own printed lab reports and the graded reports will be returned to you either in the lab or in the lecture section at the next week. For your lab reports, make sure you use the lab report template provided on Blackboard. So you'll find this document or something that looks like it on, on Blackboard. Follow the template. The template really helps the TA with time. So if you look at the, this is the grading sheet I give the TA. It looks almost exactly like the lab report template. And so I give the TA the grading sheet. If the TA has to hunt for information and items, then you won't get credit for those because they have to grade a ton of these lab reports. So do not, you know, follow the lab report closely if you expect to receive full credit for your work. For your lab reports, one suggestion I have is that, you know, in using PowerPoint or something, build up drawings of basic optical parts, mirrors, lasers, things like that, and just reuse them throughout the course so you can just move them around in PowerPoint. That'll make your life easy as you do your diagrams. You are not allowed to simply copy and insert drawings I give you, so that is not permitted. I like for you to draw them yourself because you think about them as you draw them as a result. In some cases, you, most of you have camera phones, just take a photo of your experiment and properly label the photo and annotate it. You can do that as well. That's totally fine. I just want to see the, everything documented as it needs to be. Again, each person creates their own lab report, will be graded individually, but I totally encourage you to work in groups. When you guys work in groups together, you typically learn more from each other and you get done faster. I'm, I'm completely fine with that. But it should be your own original work. I shouldn't see the same text for all multiple lab reports. In general, what's a good lab report look like? Well, a good lab report, and this is from an industry perspective, not an academic perspective, should have sufficient information that an engineer can readily understand your experiment and the key results. Basically, a good lab report, you could re-examine your report five years later and have everything you need to use the findings. Or you could give it to someone else that's never done your work and say, okay, you've got expertise in this field. Here's this, this lab report I did. You can use this now to duplicate the experiment for your purpose, whatever you need to do. Okay? And, and documentation is important because you think of new product development. It takes years. Research takes years. Patents require documentation. These things end up being really important in many uh, ways you'll find when you do more work in industry. And I, I like this cartoon. This is uh, you know, about documenting uh, science, research, and, and product development. And it, it says here, remember, the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. If you don't write it down, it doesn't exist. Okay? And so that, take that to heart with the lab report is that if you, you know, you're not, your lab report should carry the, the, uh, the experiment forward without you. You're not going to be there when someone else uses this years down the line in a company uh, to repeat your experiments. And you're not going to remember either. So write it down. Just put the details in there. Here's some more procedural stuff. The lab groups, two to three persons per group. If someone is underperforming or disruptive in your group, let me know privately. I do keep track of this. I think there tends to be some unfairness where peop some people do all the work in a group and others don't, and I want to know those that are underperforming because it will affect the, uh, the grades, potentially. Each week, I'm going to use a tool to randomly generate. I'll use this tool here to randomly generate groups. I'm going to try this. Hopefully, it works throughout the entire semester. And I'll post the results on Blackboard. So you'll be seeing new partners each week. Um, I think that's fair as well. Lab times. You can use the lab any time you choose. But clearly, all your partners must be present. So I don't want to come in the lab and see you working by yourself and saying, well, my lab, parts are running, lab partners are running late. Don't start until they get there. Everyone needs to be there as you work on the lab. Otherwise, the others aren't, others aren't doing the lab. Even for basic setup, I want them there. And if you've done the basic setup five times before, I want them there because every time you do the basic setup, you get better at it in terms of putting the, the optical parts together. If you need card access and it's not working, see Rob Montjoy. We have five tables and kits for most weeks, and for some weeks, we'll only have three. I think this year we're going to have, we might have five kits for everything. And so as you go to this sign-up calendar here, make sure that you list your group in terms of group number, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through whatever group number we have, and make sure there is no more than five groups in the lab at any given time um, such that they can, you know, otherwise you, you have nowhere to work, okay? And also manage your time as you sign up for times 
such that you can set up your experiments and tear them down. Because when you're done, someone else needs to come in and use that, uh, use that station. So unless, you've, unless the calendar says it's free, you need to tear that down if another group's coming in because they need to use the setup. And so keep that in mind too. Strict lab policies. No food or drink at all. Completely unacceptable. It'll ruin the equipment. Don't touch optical surfaces with your dirty hands, please. We, you know, grab them by the edges, the lenses and mirrors, and we have wipes in the lab too that you can use to clean them if they're dirty. Also, all your personal items below the tables or by the door. Do not put them on the tables. This is how stuff gets broken. You have optical fiber or small parts. You pull your book bag off the, uh, off the table and it pulls the parts onto the floor and now we've just lost $300 of an optical element because it shattered on the floor. I do not want to see anything on the tables with exceptions of things like notebooks and laptops. That's it. Nothing else may be on the tables or the surfaces adjacent to the tables. Everything on the ground or by the door. Each week, here's what it's going to look like for the lab. Everything you will need will be on Blackboard. And we will, when we go to the lecture section, the first thing I'll do is answer any questions you have regarding the lecture, regarding the lab, and then we're going to have a 10 to 20 minute quiz based on the last week's lab and the current week's lecture. So based on the previous lab you did, the test of whether or not you actually did the work and went through the whole lab and what you learned, and it'll also be on the, the lecture for this current week. And the lectures will all be online, okay? So you can view those online, and, and they'll be broken up into small, digestible 15-minute or 10-minute segments, if, if I can do that. And these quizzes, they're going to be simple. If you did the lab and you viewed the lecture online, you're in good shape, basically. You shouldn't have to do a whole lot of studying, maybe just some light review before you come in. Now... Copies of the quiz answer key will be provided on the way out the classroom or reviewed after the quiz for those willing to stick around until the end of the quiz time. It will not be posted, okay? And so if you want to see, learn from your mistakes on the quiz, see the solutions key on the way out the door, or we can review them after the quiz for those that want to stick around and go through the answers. The quizzes are graded automatically online on Blackboard, and so it will be multiple choice type questions primarily. So you'll need to be logged into Blackboard as we start the quiz. And we will have a quiz the first day. Very important. So starting the first week of class, we'll have a quiz. It'll cover two things. It'll cover the lecture for this week. And it will cover this presentation I'm giving you here to make sure you look through all these lab policies and procedures and you're ready to start the lab as a result. A little bit more. Um, your works in space should be pristine and completely organized as you're done with the lab. So when you're out of there, all the parts should be exactly where they go. It should look perfect. You can see when you come into this lab, I spent a lot of time organizing it, and I expect you to maintain the same level of cleanliness and organization. Very important, each time you start the lab, document any missing or broken parts before you start the lab or as you're pulling them out to do the lab. Anything you damage or break in the lab, document also. I will regularly check the kits. Any missing parts, anything that put poor cleanup or poor handling will result in a loss of points, okay? And so these sheets, you have to turn in a sheet like this, it's on Blackboard, with your lab report. One person per each group has to do that with the, with the partner names listed on the form, else everyone loses 20% for that lab. This form is how I keep track of, of, of keeping the lab in order. If I don't do this, stuff starts to go downhill, and no one claims responsibility. So this is your way, if something breaks, to say, hey, we didn't do it. We came in, the lab parts were broken. And then I can look at the parts and try to figure out who did not tell me that something got broken. I take this stuff very seriously. Again, this lab's maybe got total, you know, over two hundred dollars to $300,000 worth of equipment in, so we need to take care of it. If you break something and don't tell me or write it down and I trace it back to your group, then you will get a zero for that lab. Just tell me, okay? Stuff gets damaged, okay? Do not hesitate to tell me. But, again, try to minimize the amount of equipment loss we have this year, but don't hesitate to tell me. I expect to have some stuff happen each year. Here's the schedule. Now, this is not the real schedule. This is just an example schedule. Online, you will find the real calendar, and you'll see the topics. You'll see the points. The total points for the course will be 1,000 points, and you'll see the quizzes total, okay? Um, you'll notice here, I noted here for each week, the first week takes a little bit longer. It just takes some time for you to basically figure out how the heck do I even hook up the laser and power it on. 
Second week, you'll see you're getting a little bit faster. By the time to the third week, you'll feel like, boom, setting this stuff up will be just second memory. And you'll see some of the other things we got to set up in the lab, like beam expanders, the first time you do them, they're going to be a pain in the butt, but they will get easier, and so your time will go down. Again, I reserve the right to remove percentage points from a week's lab if I absorb poor compliance with lab policies. I also will remove points from your group's lab if I'm asked to help you and you clearly did not follow the provided instructions. Most of the time, I've had to come into the lab to help someone who's stuck. Unfortunately, I show them in the procedure something they did not read and implement, and that was the problem, okay? And so... I am more than happy to come and help you. And some of the prob projects are pretty tough. You're like, look, we did all the procedures. You can show me you did that, but we're still having trouble coupling the laser light into this 100 micron fiber core, which is a tough challenge. I'd be more than happy to help you. I just want to make sure up to that point, you followed the procedures. Because if not, you will be penalized for not following the procedures up to that point. One other thing on the grading, you must score greater than 60% average on all quizzes to pass the course. No exceptions. This is my way to make sure that folks aren't just writing on their lab group members for the lab reports in the labs. I want to make sure at least you're learning the material you need to be learning in terms of the theoretical concepts and the practical lab concepts. And so this is a minimum you have to have regardless of how you do on the labs. That's all we have. So I look forward to starting down the, uh, the course with you this semester.